Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, coming to you on location in Costa Rica, and I'm gonna do a what's in my bag video. I've had this as a request for a long time. People are always asking, Steve, do a what's in your bag video. And the reason I've resisted doing it is because what's in my bag actually varies depending on where I'm going. So in this case, I'm in Costa Rica, I'm gonna show you what I take to Costa Rica for wildlife photography. I don't do any landscapes or anything else, I just do wildlife and macros here, so you're gonna see that kit today. And the other cool thing with this though, as a general wildlife kit, it works really well almost anywhere. So don't think of this as strictly just for Costa Rica. And of course, I'm gonna go over the reasons I have all the little accessories, lenses, and cameras in this bag. So probably gonna be a little bit longer video than normal, but let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I think any bag review should probably talk about the bag itself. And I'm using a uh, Guru Gear Kaboko 30L bag. Absolutely love it. This is the 2.0 version. I had the original 1.0 version. And when it was discontinued, I was really bummed out. In fact, I love the bag so much, I bought a couple extras off of eBay. They brought it back as the 2.0 version, which is basically just a remake of the original. Very nice bag. You can get those at B&H exclusively, though you can't find those anywhere else if you're looking for the uh, 2.0 bags. The only downside I want to lead with this is that you can't put a laptop in it. But the upside is that you can put a 600 millimeter on it and it carries on any flight. You don't have to worry about your carry-on getting checked because it's too big or too wide. And that's one of the reasons you can't put a laptop. I talked to the gentleman that owns Guru Gear and he says the reason we don't have a laptop is to keep it carry on, fully carry-on compliant with pretty much every airline out there. So you'll never get these checked, which is great. Um, a couple other quick things about it that I like. My main thing is I love these flaps. Instead of having the big honk and flap that you open up, if you need something at the bottom of the bag, you open it up and all your crap falls out and it's raining and stuff's getting all messed up. Guess what? With this, you just unzip it and then just reach in, get what you need, and then put the flap back down. Really nice, really, really enjoy that feature about this bag. Uh, the other thing I like about this bag is that the padding isn't overdone. So many bags have this like ridiculously thick padding. I've been to Africa, Costa Rica, all over the United States. I've been all sorts of places with this bag. Believe me, the padding is completely adequate. You don't need half inch or one inch padding. And because it uses a little bit less padding, I put more stuff in here, which is great because I need to carry a lot of stuff with me. It also has a rain fly and it's convertible. You can actually put the backpack straps away and kind of carry it with the, with the side handle and that. So really enjoy the bag. So enough about the bag though. Let's talk about what's in the bag. Okay, so you don't have to endure me fishing through that bag for every accessory. I've laid them all out here. And these are all the things that are in my bag. We'll start with this. This is a little rain cover for uh, the camera and lens and stuff. I can put this over the camera real cheap. I think you can get these from like B&H or Adorama or pretty much, I think any camera store probably sells these. Very inexpensive, but a good way to protect your camera. I also have a larger uh, lens coat one that's for like the 600 millimeter and that that I sometimes take down here too. So very good to have in Costa Rica. Uh, let's see, we'll start with this. Uh, another thing here, a rocket blower. This is very handy for either blowing dust off the lens or off of your sensor. I always like to have one of these in the bag. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, speaking of cleaning lenses, I got a couple other things here. I have some microfiber cloths. Very handy if you need to wipe off the lens. I have a little brush here as well. And this is good if you get some debris on the lens. You never want to wipe a lens off that has like actual dirt sitting on it. So you always want to brush it off. And the rocket blower is handy for that, but I also like this little brush here. You just kind of whisk it off. As far as cleaning the lenses themselves, I just use these Nikon little Nikon wipes. They, Zeiss makes these as well. And these are just pre-moistened wipes and you can take them out and just, you know, clean the lens off. Now, as a side note, I know that lens cleaning is sort of a, uh, controversial topic, which is really weird to me, but it's, you know, some people have all these weird methods and they have all this, you know, all these particular things that they do and they're like, oh, I would never use one of these Nikon lens wipes. You should do this, this, and the other thing. Folks, for me, this stuff, these are just tools. These are tools, not jewels. I want you to remember that tools, not jewels. I use these as tools. I'm not going to be out here. I'm not babying the stuff. I'm not abusing the stuff, but I'm not babying the stuff. And I, don't tell anyone, but I've used my shirt to clean a lens before. So, I mean, everything seems to survive. The lenses are much tougher than you think. But anyhow, I love these little Nikon or Zeiss lens wipes for just quick in the field cleanup, and it works really, really well. Uh, let's take a look at some other stuff. Next, let's talk about this little doohickey here. This is a Wimberley adapter. I have no idea what the part number is. I'll put it in the video, I'll look it up for you. But you can basically put this on your gimbal head, and it allows you to put a camera 
on there that has a lens that does not have a foot on it. So if you have like a 2470 and you want to use it with a gimbal head, it's not ideal, but I tell you what, it works really well in a pinch if that's the only head that you have. So we always keep one of those in the bag. Next, we have some extra memory cards. You should always have extra memory cards in the bag. And I have a polarizer here. This is for my uh, 300 PF. I also have one of these for my macro lens that's in here as well. And I also have a drop-in one for my bigger 600 F4. Now, in Costa Rica, the lights often dim, so these very, very rarely get used, except for the one on the macro lens. I do use that one quite a bit. But for the 300 and the 600, I don't use these unless the conditions are just perfect and I'm not gonna be at like a crazy high ISO when I lose the two stops of the polarizer. But I tell you what, there's a lot of reflective surfaces down here, and these can really make a difference if you know it's bright enough to use them. So I do keep them handy. There's trips I never even touch them though, so this isn't like critical for Costa Rica, but you know, not a bad idea to have one with you. And I say they're great on macros. Uh, I also have a uh, remote release here, just a wireless re release for the cameras, for the Nikon cameras, in case I want to uh, use a cable release. Most of the time I just use exposure delay like we do in macros, but sometimes it's nice to just release it, you know, with a regular little cable release thing there. I also have this little guy here. This is a hex tool that allows me to easily remove or attach quick release plates to cameras. I ha it has another portion of it that is attached to the inside of the camera bag so I can just clip and unclip it as needed. Very handy to have. This is another accessory. I always keep a granola bar or two when I'm out because you never know when you're going to get hungry. It's always good to have some food with you, I think. Uh, I have a little Samsung SSD drive in my bag. Now this might seem unusual, but I have two of these. One of these is locked in the safe here in the house where I stay, and the other one is with me, and they both have a copy of all the current images from the trip. I always have a backup drive on me at all times, and I have another one in a secure location. I usually back up to the laptop too. If it's not backed up in three places, it doesn't exist. So make sure you get these little backup drives. These are wonderful. These are two terabyte Samsung uh, T5 drive, very fast. It's uh, USB-C. Love these little things, super reliable too. Uh, I hate to talk about it, but this is a modium because sometimes when you're on a trip, you know what happens. You eat the wrong thing, so keep that in your bag too. Uh, extra batteries, of course. I think that goes probably without saying for everybody. I have a little flashlight here, very handy to have, right at you there. And uh, at night, if you're looking for frogs and stuff like that, very handy. This one is really cool, actually. It has a red and a uh, green filter on it too, so it doesn't ruin your night vision. I'll, I think I got this from Bass Pro Shop. I'll put the uh, name of it there in the video as well. Another thing I like to keep with me is an extra lens cap and body cap, the back caps, because I lose these all the time. I don't know where they go, but I always, at the end of a trip, seem to need, need one or the other, so I always keep extras with me on these trips. Okay guys, let's talk about light modifiers next. I have a lot of these. I want to put them in their own section here. So I'm going to go over these one by one. First, we have reflectors. Uh, I always take a little reflector like this. It's like a 12 inch reflector. It's silver and white. So I have two different intensities of light when I'm doing my reflecting and it's collapsible. So it fits in your camera bag really, really well. And what I really like to use these for is macros. It's so easy to get in there. If you have a little shadow under your frog's chin, for example, you can just kind of kick some light in. What I really like is that I can use either the silver or white side and I can feather it. I find it's a little bit easier for pretty much everybody who's doing macros to use these. All of our participants really like using the reflector better than flash. It's much easier to see in the viewfinder, so highly recommended. Next we have this little Velo soft box that you can strap to your flash. A lot of places in Costa Rica give you an opportunity for nighttime photography, and if that's the case, you might want to grab one of these. These are very handy if you want just a very simple night photography solution. It softens the light, and it makes it look really nice. And sometimes you can use it in conjunction with that reflector to kind of fill in some of the shadows caused by the flash. Speaking of flashes, this is my SB5000, and generally speaking, if I'm using it down here, I'm probably not doing night photography. I don't do much of that anymore. but. A lot of times I might use it for fill flash. Fill flash is not something I do all the time or even every day or even every trip down here. But when you do need to use fill flash, it's nice to have a uh, flash unit like the SB5000, very powerful and relatively compact compared to some of the other SB units. I also have a light modifier on it. This is a MagMod wildlife kit in my hands here. And it's got a magnetic attachment here, so you just snap it in. Of course, this collapses. 
However, even when it's collapsed, it's still a little bit bulky in my bag, so part of me kind of wants to go back to the better Beamer because I think they travel better, they flatten out a little bit better. But in any event, if you're using a light modifier, a lot of people don't know what these actually do. This actually allows the flash to carry a little bit further. It kind of focuses the beam so that maybe you had, a, instead of a 30-foot range, so maybe now you have a 50-foot range. So very handy to have one of these along. Just a quick note on flash, though. A lot of people they come down here with the idea that I'm just gonna blast everything with flash as hard as I can. And you know, if there's a five or 10 stop difference between the subject and the background, I'll, I'll make it up with flash. The problem is photos like that look like they were done with a powerful flash and it doesn't look very natural, at least not to me. I don't really like those images. So what I use, on the rare occasion I do use it, it's just a little bit of fill light, just a little bit of a kiss. Most of the time though, I'll tell you what, if you look at my website and my Costa Rica gallery, the vast majority of those photos are done just with regular natural light. I'm careful with my ISOs, I'm careful with my exposures, and I'm careful with the composition. And when I make sure everything's done correctly in the field, a lot of times I don't even need the flash. So, you know, just an option to think about. Okay, let's talk lenses next. I got my lenses out of the bag here, and you'll notice there's only three of them, and a lot of people are like, geez, you only take three lenses? Yeah, I've been doing this quite a while now. I've spent, uh, six months of the last two years here in Costa Rica, and I've really refined the kit to the stuff I just need. And uh, basically we have the 600, the 300 PF, and the 105 macro, and these are great. The, the, this is all I need. I'm just doing wildlife here. I'm not doing any landscapes. If you're doing landscapes, you probably wanna throw in a 2470 or something like that. But for me, I'm just doing wildlife, so these are the tools that I need to get that job done. So let's start with the macro lens and work our way up. Uh, I use the 105 macro lens from Nikon, the newest one, the AFS version. And I usually have the polarizer kind of married to the front of it because a lot of the animals down here that I photograph um, for macro are you know, reptiles and amphibians. And their scales are always reflective and I'm usually on a tripod and that so I can go ahead and I can lose those two stops or one and a half to two stops of light that is the penalty for using a polarizer because it's worth it to get those reflections off them. Sometimes there's just such bad reflections that it kind of ruins the shot and the polarizer helps tame those. So I really recommend a polarizer, at least for your macro lens. Um, the reason I use the 105 macro, the AFS version, is because I like to do focus stacking and the older versions do not allow for focus stacking. You have to have an AFS lens. You have to have a lens with the motor built in. Some of the Sigma and Tamron lenses can do it too, but this is one of my most used lenses down here. It's funny too because at home, I don't do any macros at all, but down here, absolutely love them. So even if you're not a macro person, you probably at least want to rent one of these before you come down to Costa Rica. Next we have the mid-range lens. This is a 300 PF, and this one does not have a polarizer on it. Usually does not, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, absolutely love this little guy. I have the extra uh, foot on here from Really Right Stuff. And that helps if I'm trying to use it on a tripod. Most of the time I can hand hold this or I, I end up hand holding this. Super, super useful depending on the location. Right now I'm in the Osa Peninsula. I don't use it a ton here, but I did use it a lot in the cloud forest. It was a nice focal length for some of the hummingbirds there, although I did use the 600 there a lot too. But here in the Osa Peninsula, this doesn't get used quite as much, but one place I really like to use this is with or without a teleconverter, depends on how I'm doing it. This is really good if you're doing things like venomous snakes. You can stay back a little bit. This focus is really close. This has a high magnification ratio. And a lot of times I'll couple it with a teleconverter and I have kind of a pseudo macro lens, but it keeps my working distance safe enough that I'm not gonna get hit by a you know, venomous snake that's kind of irritated that I'm in their close personal space. So it works really well for that. Also works really well if you get in a situation where you do have have some closer subjects, so I like to have this one along. Finally, we have the workhorse. This is the 600 millimeter, and I know that a lot of the advice you see out there for Costa Rica tells you that, oh, all you need is, you know, a 300 or 400 millimeter lens. And at least from my experience, that's not really correct. You can kind of get by with a three or 400 millimeter, but you're gonna have to crop a lot. And there's a lot of penalties you pay for cropping. Matter of fact, I did a whole article that tells you all the bad things that happen when you crop, and I'll put a link to that here in the video on the card above. So check that out when you get a chance. But I tell you what, the 600 and the 600 with a teleconverter is my most common configuration down here. I'm using this lens all the time. I love it that it's an F4. Same with the 300 F4. It's nice to have that little bit faster glass, but F4 makes a huge difference down here. A lot of times it's dark. We were out in the sunlight yesterday. It was a sunny day, and there's a shadowy area, and there's an animal in that little shadowy area, and at like 250th of a second, 
F4, the camera was showing ISO 12,800. It was insane. So you get into these situations here where you really do need to gather a little bit more light. And I know a lot of people say, well, what about a 400 28? Well, it could work, but a lot of times it's too short. For, from my experience and all the pictures you've seen in this video, and I have a ton of them on my site you can look at, from my experience, the 600 is about an ideal focal length down here. 500 is really good too, but I would stay at least five to 600 millimeter down here. And this lens here, obviously, you know, high quality lens, this is a 600E. It's a little bit lighter weight than the old G version. It's sort of kind of hand holdable in a pinch. Most of the time I use it on a tripod. Um, but uh, yeah, it, th this is definitely my go-to lens down here. And uh, as you can see, I have some of this, uh, I have a little bit left over uh, lens coat on here. And the reason that's cut off and messed around with here is that I got tired of trying to work all the dials and buttons and stuff through the, uh, through the uh, clear window there. And a lot of times these buttons, these function buttons, I use them on the lens all the time and they were messed up too. So if you're wondering why this is cut like this, it's so that I could actually, you know, use the lens. So um, very handy. I also have the really right stuff foot on there with the built-in dovetail level. Really love that, that's really nice to have. Makes it uh, so much better. I see people down here all the time with the regular Nikon or Canon mounts or whatever, and they come down and they put quick releases on them, and they're forever retightening those quick releases, those quick release mounts. It's just nice to have the solid foot there. Same with, uh, same with like what I have on the 300PF. So that's the rundown on the lenses. The one thing that we have not talked about yet though, is the teleconverter. I have my little running buddy pouch as you've seen in the other videos. I like to keep this right on my hip so I look really, really cool and I have quick access to my teleconverter. But uh, this is, I just take the 1.4 TC. I use it on this lens and this lens. Super great little thing. This is the TC version three. So, but if you're coming to Costa Rica, probably want a teleconverter. You're gonna need more focal length than you think. So that's it for the lenses. Let's talk about cameras. Okay, finally, let's take a look at the cameras. These are the three cameras I use. We have the Z7, the D850, and the D5. So let's talk about why I have each one of these in my bag and which one I use the most. We'll start down here with the Z7. This is not my favorite wildlife camera. I've been pretty clear about that online. It's okay for wildlife, but I like these two better. Um, what I do really like this for, though, is macros. This is a phenomenal little macro camera. It can do focus stacking and does focus stacking faster than the D850. I love the fact that I can move that autofocus point all over that viewfinder when I'm doing my macro shots. This has been just my favorite macro camera ever. I don't want to shoot macros with anything else. I could shoot them with the 850, but I deliberately carry an extra camera. I deliberately carry this thing because I like doing macros with it so much better than I do the other ones. So that in itself probably tells you something. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is the Kirk plate right here that I'm using on the Z7, the really, really right stuff. I don't think had theirs out or available or something. So I got this one, love it. It's a really nice little plate. Um, but yeah, that's, and this is just, you know, the regular adapter on there. So, but uh, yeah, great for macros. I don't use it for much else down here though. Next we have the D850, maybe one of my favorite cameras of all time. Matter of fact, I was just talking to somebody yesterday, I, said, I told him I actually like this camera better than I like the D5, although I don't use this camera as much down here. The problem with the D850, and it's not a big problem, I have a lot of participants that come down with the D850s, really like it, but sometimes when you get in those low light situations, it can struggle when you start getting in that ISO 6400 range or 12,800, the D850 is not your best friend there. So sometimes you have to drop those shutter speeds down a little bit lower than you want. You're getting out tripods and stuff like that a little bit sooner. But, but overall, I really love the files on this. I love the color I get from it. Um, it's really handy when it's either bright enough to take the photo with the 850 and I can keep the ISOs low, I love using it for that, or if I'm in a situation where I know I'm gonna have to crop a little heavier than I normally want to. There's no secret that I don't like to crop, but sometimes it's a necessity, and if that's the case, the D5 is not my best friend there because if you have to crop to DX on this, you're around like nine megapixel or something, whereas this, you're still around 20 or so, 19.4 actually, if you're like a DX crop. So this camera could put a lot more pixels on your monkeys. So you know, in a lot of cases, I'll end up using this if I think I'm gonna need it for some extra cropping. However, the truth is, I don't think I probably use this maybe but 10% of the time down here. Most of the time, I'm using the D5. And the reason I'm using the D5 is because it has such great low light capability. And it's really, really beneficial down here. I'm using longer glass, so I don't have to crop very much most of the time. Uh, it's about a stop better almost than the D850 as far as noise performance goes. And on top of that, 
at higher ISOs, it also retains better color and it has better dynamic range. So it's got a lot going for it. And you know, of course it has phenomenal autofocus and you know, 12 frames a second and all the other good stuff that comes with the D5. But really it's the sensor performance that's making me use it down here more than anything else. And uh, I say this is definitely my go-to. Would I say it's necessary to have one of these to have a good Costa Rica trip? Absolutely not. But if you do have one, probably shouldn't leave it at home. It works really, really well. Okay guys, I'm gonna interrupt my own video here. I was putting the actual, the rest of the video together and it occurred to me that maybe I should also talk about the stuff that's not in my bag, that's in my check luggage that I use here in Costa Rica. So I'm gonna go over some of this stuff real briefly. First is my 600 millimeter lens hood. This does not fit really well into that bag. So I take this and I just put it into my check bags. I have a hard case and it stays protected in there. Works really well. You can just stuff some clothes in there too if you need to, if you need to space. Next, we have the uh, tripod. This is my really right stuff. This is a three series. I'll put the exact model there. This is completely adequate for holding my long 600 millimeter F4 E lens. Works really, really well for that. Carbon fiber, relatively lightweight, has O-ring seals in the legs. I really like that. So if I'm putting it in a river or something, I'm not worried about a bunch of sand and stuff getting up into the legs. And the best thing though, is that this is the extra long version. And there's two reasons I like the extra long version. The first is that if I'm on a hill, and I need to extend one of the legs down. I can extend one of the tripod legs down and keep the tripod level and make up for that difference in height. So that's really nice. The second one though is probably my favorite down here and that is that I can raise it up over my head so when I'm shooting up in trees, I'm not down there squatting the whole time. I'm just comfortably looking up into the lens. So that's really nice. On top of it is my Wimberley WH200 gimbal head, my favorite head. And uh, I have the uh, cradle clamp here so I have the quick release, very, very handy. This is attached with a really right stuff clamp and plate here so I can take this on and off and I can put it on my monopod or I can take this off and put my ball head, which is on loan right now, but I can put my ball head on here if I needed it for like a macro or something. So really a handy combination to have. The other thing that I take in my check bags is my monopod. And once again, I do have the quick release clamp on here so that I can go ahead and maybe put the gimbal head on the monopod. And I have actually a video all about that and why it's so cool. So I'll put a link up there for you to take a look at that. But that's basically the stuff I put in my check bags. I just wanted you to know. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so that's about it. So if you like this stuff, make sure you check out my eBooks too. Secrets to Studying Wildlife Photography, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System, and Secrets to Exposure and Metering for Nikon. There is a ton of great information, hundreds and hundreds of pages of great tips, tricks, and advice in those books. Make sure you check them out. Also, make sure you stop by my site, sign up for that free email newsletter so you know anytime I post new material, whether it's a video article or whatever. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel too, and you see that little blue bell down there? Make sure you bring your mouse cursor down, give that a nice click for me so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.